Bienvenidos a un programa más de la serie. Hoy en adelante, lecciones de salsa en Delaware House. Una segunda parte de la Conferencia del Caribe en la Universidad Marquette y Jaime Alvarado, presidente del Club Rotario Amigos de Milwaukee. Nuevas oportunidades para aprender y practicar salsa en Milwaukee son una evidencia de que el escenario de la salsa continúa expandiéndose. En caso de que los clubes de danza no sean sus preferidos, los eventos sociales ofrecen una atmósfera relajada tanto para los bailarines más experimentados como para los principiantes. Para una mirada a las opciones que existen, encaminémonos a Delaware House en Bayview y escuchemos de aquellos que están prendiendo fuego en el piso de baile. Ready, back step on the left, and left, and right. You're at Delaware House, and this is Salsa Night. Five, six, seven. Tonight, the instructors are Matt and Betsy, and also Danny Four. Valderas. And for the ladies, it's going to be kind of a wax on, wax off motion. Hands are about the level as if you were typing a typewriter. And you're going to have circles here. You don't want your elbows too close to your ribs. And guys are right here. I've been dancing in Milwaukee salsa scene for about the last eight years, teaching for the last six. Um, my first contest that I entered was at the old Club Havana, and <laughs> I actually did pretty bad. But someone saw me, and they gave me an opportunity to teach with Milwaukee Public Recreation. And from there, started to snowball into more teaching opportunities, more performing opportunities, and better results competing. All right, the next step we're going to do is a side step. So instead of going forward on your left and back on your right, you're going to go to your left with your left foot, right with your right foot. One, two, three, five, six, seven. The uh, classes that I offer at the Delaware House on a weekly basis are workshop style classes. If you've been to any type of Salsa Congress, which is in effect a weekend convention, you normally will start off a one hour workshop with about 10 minutes of footwork and then 50 minutes of a turn pattern with styling tips throughout the pattern. Basic turn, one, two, three, back on the right. I try to make basic, sure everyone that's in my classes gets a turn, little bit of face time and pointers one. that are specifically directed towards them, you know, and then as the group as a whole gets an idea of what I'm trying to show them, then the you know, the everybody step. learns what I show. Right now. We're doing a side step. All right, so here we go. I'm starting forward, one full basic. And one, two, three, and five, six, seven. Cross body lead. Five, six, and you open up. Uh, right now, our, our main classes are uh, what we call club style salsa, or salsa on a line. And then we also uh, teach a style of salsa that's a more of a Cuban variation on salsa. It's called salsa rueda, or rueda de casino. And uh, it's a group dance where couples dance in a, for a circular formation and there's a caller and he uh, calls out calls and they all kind of do it. It's kind of like square dancing. Here we go. And one, two, three, five, six, seven. We focus a lot on partnership. Um, leading and following is really important. I just really like to bring people together, uh, feeling the music and kind of exploring who they are in a completely different way. Five, six, seven, and one. Once you learn some basic steps, you can uh, come up to a complete stranger, uh, get into an embrace, and have a nonverbal conversation with them. Uh, you can both experience this music together and uh, share a mutual feeling without even ever saying anything. You know, half the people I dance with, I don't speak their language. Uh, I'm coming from a completely different uh, uh, life experience, and yet at that moment, we're having the exact same experience, and we're having this uh, conversation that really can't be put into words, so we put it into dance. You're gonna show her your hands, so you step back, turn, and catch, all right? Right, now ladies, what we're doing here is just the back half of our basic, but as he gets out of our way, we know it's a cross body lead, He's doing a hand toss. That typically means we're gonna let go of this hand. We are gonna carry it further than he's tossing it. And I'm opening my shoulders, I'm on my line with my arms. 
So Matt and Betsy are the um, instructors that are in charge of the group Mezclando Milwaukee, and their main goal is to promote salsa dancing in a social setting in a very affordable way for everybody in Milwaukee, so that they try to keep it fun and light and lively. And just do a little hand change behind your back, or if you're feeling fancy, you're gonna go boop, and just kind of do a flick, all right? And she's gotta sell it. Danny Balderas has his own group, it's a performance group, but together they run the Salsa Socials here at Delaware House. There's another group in Milwaukee which is called Mambo Elegancia. It's also a performance-based group. Um, so what we have is we have these three separate groups, but they also work together to promote the social scene here. There's several teachers, there's several performance groups, a lot of studios that are doing lessons. And this was not the case five or 10 years ago. Now, you have several different venues. There's the warehouse, there's BYO, there's Kanya, there's special events in the summer and the winter time, and there's at least 20 Latin dance instructors, and there's about three or four different dance troops. So I would have to say that Milwaukee salsa scene is expanding aggressively, and there's always new people wanting to learn. My biggest challenge with the students that I teach is instilling confidence, making sure that they feel comfortable. I don't want folks to feel out of place. Some people have never danced before and they may think, oh well, I'm never going to get this, or this is impossible. Um, there's a quote that says, excellence is a habit. Whatever you do the most, you're going to do the best. So I tell them just to stay at it. And one, and five. Better, but you're going to want your hands away from your body a little bit, a little bit further out. Okay? Better. Awesome. Dance really provides a positive social experience for people who maybe, um, you know, they're just looking to have a good time and meet some people and have friends. And our community has sort of grown to where we can have a social event like this once a month where people really do just get together and dance which is how I was brought up thinking about dance. It's a community thing for, for everybody. En otoño pasado se llevó a cabo en la Universidad de Marquette el segundo Congreso Internacional de Estudios Caribeños. En este evento, presentadores de diferentes países compartieron sus conocimientos sobre la literatura, el cine, la política y la identidad caribeña. Veamos esta segunda parte del reportaje de nuestra productora independiente, Natalie Álamo. I just want to mention for people who arrived now that this is a parallel discourse to what I'm doing. And every single piece of art there is produced by artists in the Cuban diaspora. Cuban-American critic Eliana Rivero sets forth the idea that, and I quote, there is a Cuban transnation that has been spilling beyond the material boundaries of the island for several years. Mi presentación fue sobre un tópico de la diáspora cubana o la historia visual de la diáspora cubana en, en Estados Unidos. Yo estoy trabajando con el tema de la diáspora. Eh, soy directora de Café, de, de, de Journeys of Artists and Writers of the Cuban Diaspora. Y um, quisiéramos o quisiera dar a conocer más el trabajo de la diáspora, es decir, de los artistas y de los escritores de, de diáspora al público en general. De una manera, eh, yo creo que es eh, mientras más se conozca el trabajo, la gente pues lo, lo, lo comenta y, y bueno, se conoce más, se da más a conocer a la comunidad hispánica de Estados Unidos. No, no solamente a la, comun a la comunidad cubana, sino también a toda la diáspora hispánica que tenemos en, en Estados Unidos. Cuba, I'm presenting on a book that's coming out next May, which focuses on the exhibit that was here, the art exhibit called Café. And I've been working with Leandro Soto, who's the curator, and Grisel Pujala, his wife, who is the director of CAFE. Um, Leandro was one of the founders of CAFE, and I've been working with them for as long as I can remember, and, and actually very involved with CAFE itself. And we just realized that we needed to write a book about this very unusual exhibit. Viewers become entrapped by the film's overt romantic fantasy of racial mixture. And I believe that a crucial part of this visual entrapment takes place through the film's silencing of the past, um, a ruse that I will further discuss. Mi presentación fue sobre la representación del Caribe en la película española Flores de Otro Mundo. 
Yo soy estudiante doctoral en la Universidad de Wisconsin-Madison y estoy escribiendo mi tesis sobre cuestiones de ciudadanía y la representación del extranjero caribeño en la narrativa y en el cine. Me encantó oír eh, los trabajos de los, de los ponentes um, y creo que es una manera de, de, buena de recibir retroalimentación de otra gente que está trabajando en el campo. I, I definitely see your, your perspective. But I think what you get in the film is the two situations that a, a Caribbean woman can find. Mm -hmm. You can find a good husband in Spain, mm -hmm. or you can find a man that treats you like a prostitute. I mean, yeah. Both cases are true. I yeah. know. In this case, I think you're right. I mean, they're hypersexualized female stereotypes of the Caribbean woman. So mm -hmm. I think it, I, I love the movie. I think it was great, but yeah, I love it too. You know, but but you're right. It's kind of an easy fix. You know, give me these two very straight stereotypes. Let me work with those. Whereas I think it's a lot more complex than that. And just an anecdote of what we, it was brought up here: the mm -hmm. the stereotype of Caribbean women as object of pleasure. And so that is a mixture of. It's not a pure. So it's it's kind of. Mm -hmm brings that up, it's kind of funny. You know, people but forget I, I, their own yeah. history. And that's not necessarily what I was challenging. I was challenging this idea that her, um, that mestizaje and her marriage to this man suddenly erases all memory of her Caribbean uh, linkage. Muchas veces eh, la gente que no conoce otra cultura pues tiende eh, a crear unas ideas eh, prejuiciosas, esnovistas, y esto es eh, mostrar que hay una gran diversidad en nuestra cultura, eh, y está hablando ahora de la cultura hispana y también de la cultura caribeña, eh, pero yo creo que la idea principal es crear esos puentes culturales, eh, puentes lingüísticos eh, entre eh, nuestra cultura y la cultura anglosajona. Lo importante es que eh, se trabaja en torno a la cultura hispánica, en este caso la cultura del Caribe, ¿no? y se da a conocer, es decir, se expande el, los estudios, se expande el, el conocimiento y se, se, a través de los estudiantes, ¿no? se, da, se pasa a los estudiantes, los estudiantes participan y se, se da a conocer más la labor eh, de la cultura hispánica en los Estados Unidos. Bueno, um, yo creo que el Caribe es algo que vemos en todas partes, en la música, en la televisión. Um, como dice la socióloga Mimi Scheller, el Caribe se está consumiendo por todas partes del mundo. Y yo creo que, que estos congresos uh, son una manera de aportar algo intelectual más allá del entretenimiento uh, sobre el Caribe de unir a estudiosos, artistas a, que son caribeños o que trabajan el Caribe en, en, en sus varios proyectos. Y creo que a, es una manera de fomentar a, la diversidad ¿no? y en el conocimiento sobre esta área muy importante de América Latina, pero que a la vez mucha gente no conoce. Oh, the conference is wonderful because it brings together people from all different areas. Um, brings it's interdisciplinary. It's inclusive of many different voices and looking at all different forms of cultural expression. So it's just been a wonderful place to be. Para mí y creo que para todas las personas que me han ayudado en en esta empresa cultural es que. Eh, tratamos de crear puentes, puentes culturales, una mejor comprensión de, de nosotros los hispanos eh, en general y de nosotros los caribeños en particular. Pero también eh, mostrar que nuestra universidad y nosotros estamos interesados en llevar a cabo este tipo de, de evento cultural. And they went to Cuba, they went to Havana, and they stay there. Mm -hmm. And happy ending. <laughs> <laughs>
El Club Rotario se encuentra presente en más de 200 países alrededor del mundo y cuenta con más de 1.200.000 personas. Sirve a diferentes causas que ayudan al desarrollo de las comunidades. Jaime Alvarado, el presidente del Club Rotario Amigos de Milwaukee, nos habla de cómo se fundó este capítulo y cuáles son sus objetivos. Jaime, thanks for joining us on Adelante. Pues gracias por tu invitación. Es un placer estar aquí. Por favor, disculpe porque voy a hablar en inglés. We really appreciate your presence on our show. So we want to know uh, what is the Rotary Club? Well, I've been a Rotarian for a year and a half, mm -hmm. and our club is a year and a half old. Mm -hmm. I am currently the president, and um, I am fascinated uh, still on what Rotary is, and I'm still learning, so I have some notes here. But Rotary, for the most part, is a global network of community volunteers. Mm -hmm. They are a volunteer organization of 1.2 million members in over 200 countries. These volunteers are composed of professionals, uh, business, and community leaders. Some examples of typical members are, are established professionals who are in the fields of accounting, teachers, uh, lawyers, and uh, engineers. Imagine, well, some of the examples of uh, leaders in uh, business and nonprofits are entrepreneurs, uh, board members, and uh, executive directors. And some examples of community uh, leaders include elected officials and leaders of uh, different organizations. This sounds very interesting, but uh, what uh, do they do together? Okay. Rotary clubs, in a nutshell, help people who, who are in need. Mm -hmm. uh, our model is service above self. Mm -hmm. And um, for example, our clubs will aid uh, people who are devastated in catastrophes. Mm -hmm. Our club also has, or Rotary clubs also have projects that uh, address poverty needs. Mm -hmm. And as you know, poverty affects not only individuals, but communities and countries. And um, some of the, well, through the recession, our Latino community in Milwaukee has, has uh, been affected. Many uh, citizens, many people are living in a, in a cycle of poverty. And f for example, 40% of our youth are dropping out of high schools. And unemployment and um, illiteracy are very high. So, um, for the most part, Rotary helps people in poverty. Um, it's a, it's a, a very uh, uh, interesting, um, a very important concern among many people to change the conditions, uh, to improve the uh, quality of life of uh, many others who are not uh, so fortunate. So, uh, how uh, did Rotary start? Um, uh, if we want to talk about uh, the chapter that you uh, precede. Well, Rotary started in 1905. Mm -hmm. uh, it started literally in our backyard. A Racine, Wisconsin native uh, is a founder. His name is Paul Harris. Mm -hmm. And he started the club in Chicago with eight members. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's 1.2 million members mm -hmm. in over 200 countries. All of the countries in Central and South America have clubs and um, they're clubes rotarios. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure many of your viewers are have heard of uh, Rotary Club's projects or have been touched by a project. Mm -hmm. And in Wisconsin, there are 150 clubs in, uh, currently. Mm -hmm. And Rotary Club Amigos de Milwaukee is the only Latino, uh, the only club that's uh, located in a Latino community. How many other clubs are there in the city? In the city, there are currently 20. In the greater Milwaukee area, there's currently 20 clubs. Um, what are some of the projects uh, that uh, the club had accomplished up to now? Um, well, every year we recognize three nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. We recognize and award them $400 for um, for showing excellence in our community. Mm -hmm. Some of the other projects include volunteering at Illiteracy Services of Wisconsin, mm -hmm. at El Cor Centro for Dia de la Mujer, mm -hmm. 
and a program that reaches, uh, that reads books for the blind. Okay. We also partner with LULAC, which is League of United Latin American Citizens. Okay. Daryl Modine is the state director. And uh, we partner to encourage the community on completing the census. The census is very important. Uh, we all need to be counted. Mm -hmm. um, another partnership that we did with them was voter registration drives for the last elections. Mm -hmm. And that is also hugely important because we need representation mm -hmm. and uh, politicians to, to, uh, to uh, take our needs very seriously. Mm -hmm. We set up booths at Umos, mm -hmm. at El Rey uh, Food Mart, mm -hmm. and also at the uh, Cinco de Mayo Parade. Next year, we're or the next elections, we're going to be doing a much bigger uh, promotion. For international projects, we um, donate $1,000 for a shelter box uh, a week after the earthquakes in Haiti. Mm -hmm. The shelter box consists of, uh, well, serves a family, a large family, consists of a tent, a uh, portable stove, cooking supplies, water purifier, and a host of other needs. Uh, we have members who have visited South America, uh, such as Brazil and Argentina. Mm -hmm. uh, that member is Cecilia Rebufo, mm -hmm. uh, Colombia and Ecuador, uh, Patricia Cracker, myself, mm -hmm. and Panama, Angela Rester, mm -hmm. who's our founder. In fact, uh, we have two members today who are in Guatemala uh, doing a, a, a medical mission, which is Dorothy Krupa and, and uh, Angela Rester. Well, uh, that sounds very impressive. Uh, can you tell us, just for our, our audience to know, um, how uh, are your meetings are set up, uh, how the agenda is um, uh, made? Well, every week mm -hmm. we feature um, uh, programs that, that, that talk about the community or projects mm -hmm. concerning the community. Mm -hmm. We bring in a speaker. Uh, they usually speak for a half hour, and then there's a question and answer session. Mm -hmm. And um, we've featured very prominent speakers. Um, can you mention some of them um, that up to now uh, people can recognize? Yes, uh, we've had the uh, City of Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett. Mm -hmm. We've had um, the uh, Wisconsin former Wisconsin Supreme Court Justice Janine uh, Geske, mm -hmm. and uh, City of Milwaukee Police Chief uh, Ed Flynn. Mm -hmm. Some of the Latino uh, leaders include former UWM Chancellor Carlos Santiago, mm -hmm. uh, Roberto Hernandez, Director Dr. Enrique Figueroa, mm -hmm. and the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel uh, editor, uh, Ricardo Pimentel. Um, who can be a member? Uh, who can meet the requirements to become a member of the uh, Club Rotario Amigos de Milwaukee? Well, anybody who is a professional mm -hmm. and who is a person of integrity can join. Mm -hmm. uh, that person also needs to be passionate about helping people in need. Mm -hmm. uh, Rotary embraces professionals of all vocations mm -hmm. and um, encourages high ethical standards in them. Mm -hmm. uh, a few other requirements include 50% attendance in our meetings, which is flexible. Uh, you can go to a voluntary event or a committee meetings and that include that counts as a meeting mm -hmm. and uh, annual dues. They also need to fill out an application and be accepted by the uh, board of directors, mm -hmm. uh, which is a fairly simple process. Uh, anyone interested can visit our website, mm -hmm. uh, rotaryamigos.org, and leave their contact information. Um, how much are the dues, the uh, yearly dues for members? Currently, the dues are $200 a year. Mm -hmm. And roughly $50 goes towards um, administration, and the rest goes back into the community on service projects. So uh, how many members do you have right now in the uh, uh, Club Rotario Amigos de Milwaukee? Right now we have mm -hmm. 24 members. Mm -hmm. And you just uh, started no, no long ago in, in this chapter. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, we started, uh, well, our founder mm -hmm. is Angela Rester, mm -hmm. and she held a few uh, community meetings in uh, 2008, and in 2009, we started meeting, mm -hmm. and um, and we chartered in June of 2009. Okay, and how do you feel about uh, being the president of this chapter and 
looking to uh, uh, bring comfort to those who have, uh, you know, who are less fortunate and to um, bring awareness on the issues that are hurting Latinos. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure to be mm -hmm. the president. Mm -hmm. um, very proud. Our members are very dedicated. I'm, I'm happy to be a part of all the meetings. They're mm -hmm. very energetic. Um, the biggest issue for me is education, mm -hmm. so poverty, and um, those are the issues that, that we try to uh, address. Uh, Jaime, um, thank you very much for being with us in our show, and uh, we hope that uh, many people in the audience uh, could be interested in uh, being part of uh, such a dynamic group um, in El Club Rotario Amigos de Milwaukee. Thank you. Al final de un programa más, por favor déjenos saber sus comentarios al teléfono 297-7544 o escríbanos a nuestro correo electrónico adelante arroba matc.edu. Visítenos en nuestro sitio del internet en mptv.org y en Facebook. Sintonícenos en Canal 10.1 o 36.2 todos los martes a las 6.30 de la tarde y en Canal 36.1 los miércoles a las 12.30 de la medianoche y los domingos a las 5.30 de la tarde. Soy Patricia Gómez, muy buenas noches.